Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we are going to have a look at a Linux distro for uh, that was uh, put together by uh, English Bob, his Bubuntu Linux, which is the coolest name you could come up with. Um, of course, taking his um, uh, YouTube name of English Bob and um, mixing that, of course, with Ubuntu. And so what he did is uh, he does a lot of a lot of neat stuff on on YouTube with uh, with some gaming and with some uh, truck simulation and just talking about uh, Linux platforms. And uh, what he has done over the course is just kind of developed a nice system. And he released a distribution based upon um, what he was um, uh, based upon how he had his system set up. And it's it's essentially it's his first run at, at building a distro which is really cool and uh, what he did is he uh, he basically just took uh, El Ubuntu as the core and then customized uh, a few things had some software packages um, that are a little unique and uh, just kind of set it up in the way that that works out for his platform and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a look at Ubuntu. Uh, just as a, mostly just a, an awareness raising. This is essentially just El Ubuntu, which is already a good distro. Um, and um, let's see, I'm just getting the system set up on this side. It's already a really good distro. And, and this is just basically his customization, his packages based upon what he likes to do. And so I'm trying to get the, uh, trying to get it back running into full screen mode in the um, virtual box. Hey, there it goes. Okay. And I also want to move my picture down to the corner before I transition because uh, Bob likes his taskbar at the top uh, rather than the bottom. So not ex exactly my preference, but that is cool. We have uh, different preferences in the world. And the great thing about Linux is you can set your machine up to your individual preferences. Um, and if you've watched a lot of English Bob's videos like I've done, you can see that he does have his his desktop setup, whether he's running El Ubuntu or Peppermint, he generally keeps his desktop set up like this, which is cool. So uh, I've kept this um, mostly stock. I did a couple little things. Um, so I want to talk about the distro a little bit. Uh, this is a 1.2 gigabyte download. Uh, so it's not super big, not super small. It's what you would expect from a fully functional distro. Uh, one of the few that I've ever seen that comes with uh, OBS pre-installed. That was cool. Um, and it is the most recent version. I know with Farin OS you can uh, get OBS in the repository, uh, which is the first time I've seen that, but it is uh, at least last time I, I knew it was an older version of OBS. Uh, the one that English Bob has on here is the latest version, uh, 0.16.2. And um, so what we're going to do here is just kind of walk through a little bit before I get uh, too far into this. Um, first is the installer system. If, uh, if you're used to testing out other distros, this will be slightly different in that when you load it in as a live key, which you can easily do, uh, you do not have the option to install it from the GUI, at least not that I've found. Um, so no big deal. You just, uh, after you've played with it on the live key, if you know you want to install it, just need to reboot the system and on the startup menu, there is the option to go ahead and install it. Um, now, the downside I found with the installer is that it is not nearly as intuitive as many of the installers are. Um, so uh, basically what it does is it just walks you through uh, putting a copy of the ISO image on your existing hard drive, but you do actually have to uh, repartition and decide where, the, um, uh, where everything uh, should be going. And uh, had I known that in advance, I might have actually walked through how to set it up. It's not super difficult. It's, it's just a little bit different than if you've played with a lot of other Ubuntu installs, then, you know, the Ubuntu installer is pretty easy. This one was more like, a little more like the Fedora one. Um, now, another of, the, another of the things that I found early on is that the, obviously, uh, English Bob is from UK, and so all of the settings and things are on UK, which is great. The downside is with this uh, new version of, of El Ubuntu, and this is not in any way dealing with Ubuntu, uh, but El Ubuntu does not seem to have a good way in the GUI to change the keyboard layout. And that might be the only thing that really trips you up. 
Um, and so to get the keyboard layout working, I just booted up a terminal, hold control, alt, push T, you'll get a terminal. Um, oh, hold on. I pulled up my terminal for, uh, I just pulled up the terminal for my Linux Mint, not for the actual Ubuntu. So here's the terminal for Ubuntu here. And uh, you can see here that uh, he has this very nice uh, themed up. It gives you a lot of system information here right on the startup there. And I'm just going to push up twice to sh uh, show you what you did to change the configuration. So here we're just running sudo dpackage reconfigure space keyboard dash configuration. This is going to walk you through a screen where you can set up your keyboard um, and other settings in the computer to match your particular language. Uh, so this is you know just a nice uh, a nice way to to configure it for your own language country, and that's what I needed to do because of course I'm in US. Um, and that's, uh, I think that that's a challenge on Elubuntu. That's not uh, necessarily an issue on, on this version here. It's just something Elubuntu doesn't have that I know of. Um, the desktop wallpapers, he has a few wallpapers in here. This is the default one, which is actually really cool. Um, if you go into desktop preferences, you can come over here and look at some of the other ones. Of course, uh, this one here is kind of the, uh, uh, kind of the default, um, uh, El Ubuntu one. That's the one that's on my um, on my computer. He also has some nice uh, car images. Like that is totally awesome. And then some other some other general El Ubuntu uh, wallpapers as well are are inside of here. So you can pick the wallpapers that you want. Um, I'm just going to go back to his his default one, just kind of keep it keep it as English Bob's uh, system there. Um, he has his dock set up, so it kind of behaves very much like the Mac dock. In fact, the icon package, and I forget which one it is. Uh, he actually tells you in the um, on his uh, SourceForge uh, uh, SourceForge page what the icon pack is, either that or on, I think on his SourceForge page in the YouTube video where he's introducing this, he tells you the name of that of the icon pack. Um, I like this. It's it's uh, it's modern, but it's not flat, and that's you know kind of nice. In fact, most of these are pretty much exactly what you'll find on a Mac. Of course, the web browser, the files is much like the Macs. Uh, the app is much like the Macs. Not sure why, but but the GIMP is is a little bit different. I do run GIMP on my Mac computer, and it is a, a little bit different. Um, but uh, overall, the icon pack is is modern, but not but not flatten, in my opinion, a little ugly. So I like these uh, these icons he chose. And then of course, the uh, as far as the onboard applications, we have uh, a whole lot of useful things because that's, you know, Ubuntu flavors do generally have a lot of your system tools, but of course it's a much lighter. Now um, about English Bob though, is he's a gamer and he does video production and he does things. So the cool thing about this distro is if you're into video production or you're into games, this is a really great, very lightweight distro you can run because it has a lot of the cool uh, gaming and media functions. So it has Steam enabled. I don't personally use Steam, but it's awesome to have Steam enabled on the system when you first uh, log into it. Uh, so you don't have to do that. And then it has uh, a few different, you'll see a few different image editing items. Uh, let's see, transmissions there for torrents. Um, under your sound and video, there's a whole lot of different players. Um, GUCV view. V VC view, I can never say that application right. Um, OBS, of course. Uh, there's Spotify's in there uh, by default if you like that. In fact, I thought that was originally on the menu. Maybe, maybe that was just on the live key there. Um, and then VLC and X uh, XF burn for burning CDs, DVDs. Uh, this also has bleach bit on it by default, which is an awesome way to clear out all your caches. We have a package installer, just a lot of um, a lot of useful information. You can see here we're only running on 300 megabytes of memory, so that's going to make this thing a, a very nice uh, a very nice lightweight platform uh, to uh, to use. Particularly if you have an older or a smaller computer, this would run great on that. And that's that's all English Bob seems to run is the really lightweight packages, which eh, really makes the computer zoom especially if you're using the system to do a lot of system heavy resources, gathering every bit of system resources back is uh, quite, a, quite a good thing to do there. All right, 
Um, he also has, uh, there's boxes, which I've never actually used boxes, but it is a virtualization. I'm not sure I could run that because I'm already in a virtual box, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I might might play with it. Uh, of course, this computer has enough system resources to, to do that as long as it's technically feasible. Um, we have our... Um, uh, we have our folders up here, so you can see all of the, um, you know, everything that's in the folders. So overall, a very nice, uh, very lightweight platform. Um, like I said, the only major, the only major uh, issues I, I encountered uh, from a user standpoint is the installer was a little bit more difficult than one of your basic installers. So you might need help if you're not. If you're not used to how to install an OS, you might need a little bit more help on this one. Um, and uh, changing the language settings. Now there is um, there is some online tool, uh, references which are out of date, which will tell you to go to keyboard and mouse. You'll notice here that keyboard and mouse does not have a place to change your uh, change your uh, keyboard settings. There is a language and region. Uh, I think it might be under language support. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's under language support, but this this will control the menus and such, but does not control the um, does not control the keyboards. So it does have a very nice dark theme to it. That's another uh, another nice nice feature. And let's just have a look. Everything else should be pretty much all Ubuntu on here. Uh, the only, um, I think another one of the major things that I, I personally would change if I were running this is um, Google Chrome is, uh, since I moved to Linux because of privacy, not because of um, wanting a different operating system, um, Google Chrome is, to me, I'm not a big fan of it because I don't want the proprietary software in there. Uh, so I'm more inclined to use something like Chromium if I wanted that. I generally still prefer Firefox. But a lot of people still use Chrome and like Chrome, so it's there. In fact, somebody got got kind of nasty on one of my comments on on one of my videos. I think it was uh, it might have been Zorin. I forget which distro it was, um, or maybe it was Solus. I forget. But um, anyway, the um, the the OS allowed you to pick which browser you wanted between Firefox, Chromium, Chrome, and Opera, probably, and um, you know, I had mentioned that and I had just kind of mentioned in passing that if you want to install Google Chrome, it's right there and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to go any through through any hoops to do that. Um, but, uh, and somebody got really nasty on the comments talking about how bad Google Chrome is and whatever else. And, you know, from a privacy and uh, a privacy standpoint, which is the point of view that I come to using Linux for, I generally... Uh, I'll use Google Chrome for two purposes. Um, the first is if I'm doing any web application that needs a more recent version of Flash, Google Chrome has codecs embedded in it that behave, I'm not sure if they completely are, or they behave like a more modern version of Flash. And um, it, it will allow you to do things that older versions of Flash will not support. And that's important because Flash support was cut off for Linux. A while back and so there's no new versions there, there's some security updates but as far as new versions um, you're not seeing a lot and um, th this came to my attention because I'm working on uh, I was working on a development team with a startup video game company and the game which is a flash based game has to have one of the more recent versions of flash and the only browser it will work on on Linux is Chrome because other browsers don't have the support that it needs, but Chrome does. The other place where you need Chrome on Linux is if you are doing something with Amazon videos. So if you're watching videos on the Amazon platform, none of the other browsers, I, at least I have not been able to get any other browsers to work on that on Amazon videos, but Chrome, you can watch your Amazon videos on a Linux computer. And so there are legitimate reasons to have Chrome in uh, in a distro. Um, it's not my personal preference, so if I were running this um, for everything else, um, you know, I would take Chrome out and install something else, or I'd probably just leave Chrome there um, in case I need it, and I'd just install Firefox and Chromium is what I do. That's what I have over here. 
uh, Firefox is my primary browser and Chromium is my uh, my YouTube browser. So, you know, that's kind of the way I do. Um, overall, this is a great distro. Um, I probably wouldn't run it just because I'm not a gamer. Um, and uh, I'm also, you know, I already have my Linux Mint computer set up for all my video production and such. Uh, but outside of that, this is an awesome distro. Um, if you are uh, if into gaming or into media systems and you're looking for a platform, this is probably one you want to look at because you don't have to go through all of the, you know, all of the finding the packages. Uh, in my case, I had to install the PPAs to install uh, OBS. Um, I had to install a lot of the packages he already has on here. So if you are looking for a system to do video production and or to do gaming on, um, this is a, a good logical choice. It's very lightweight, it's very slick, nice dark theme, uh, runs nicely, and it is an Ubuntu install, so it's uh, it's really cool in that respect. Um, and you know, overall, I, I give this thing uh, this thing two thumbs up, and it's still a work in progress. I think he just released this. Um, uh, I think he just released this a couple of weeks ago. Um, but uh, you should go check out his uh, his channel, his videos, and he has uh, a lot of information about this. And uh, if you, uh, it is only available right now on a 64-bit. He said if he has enough people asking for 32-bit, he'll look at releasing it on 32-bit. Uh, so if you do uh, want that, let him know directly. And of course, any other general questions, you can direct towards him. Uh, you can just do some searches for Bubuntu or probably English Bob will still get uh, get stuff up. Let me just pull up his site real quick here. Come over here and let's do let's do a search for Bubuntu, and you'll see right here Ubuntu Bubuntu Linux uh, 1.0. So. This is his channel right here. All right, so go check out uh, his channel, uh, check out his distro, and uh, you know he's a he's a great guy, and I think he still live streams on a regular basis as well. I know I just watched one the other day where he was uh, live streaming through some of his um, uh, some of his uh, truck simulations. Uh, so go ahead and check this uh, check this out, and um, we will. Uh, talk to you later. So this has been Tom and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.